All right, if we're talking mobility, there's really three major types of mobility problems that we find. There are mechanical, there are chemical, and they're neurological. Mechanical would be things like tissue extensibility or tight tissue, restricted joints, those are mechanical causes. Chemical would be like inflammation, if you've got swelling, infections, or lack of blood flow. And then your neurological is more of your brain shutting down the motion, there's really nothing physically wrong. But I wanna talk about mechanical real quick. We always say it's either a tissue, ligament, a tendon, fascia, a muscle that's creating the restriction, or a joint. In our medical and fitness tracks, we spend a lot of time trying to differentiate because the way we treat those and train those are very different. There are two classic signs that can help steer you in the right direction. The first one is how many planes of motion it restricts. Mobile joints tend to move in all three planes. My wrist, it can flex and extend, it can hinge, and it can rotate. My shoulder can do the same thing. My hip can do the same thing. My ankle can do the same thing. When a joint, a mobile joint gets restricted, we tend to see it affects all three planes, right? Because the joint, I call it the equal opportunity employer. It's gonna affect all ranges of motion typically. It doesn't have to, but it typically does. Take your shoulder, for example. If you're testing shoulder range of motion, and let's say external rotation, your 9090 is a little tight, and you're wondering, is that joint or is that tissue? Well, check internal rotation. Check flexion. Check extension. Abduction or adduction. If you start noticing all planes are restricted, now I'm starting to think the joint. If hip extension is restricted, hip flexion is restricted, hip internal rotation is restricted, I'm thinking joint. If I only notice one plane of motion is restricted, hey, it's just external rotation, but everything else, the shoulder's great, I got all this great range of motion, I just can't actually rotate, that's kind of a sign that it might just be tissue. So the first sign of joint versus tissue would be how many planes of motion are restricted. The second, which is really important, is where do they feel the restriction? Let's say I was gonna check elbow range of motion. I'm gonna flex my elbow. Normally, you should be able to touch your thumb to your shoulder, but let's say they can only go this far. Now, I wanna know, is that an elbow joint problem or is that a tissue problem? Well, now what I do is I ask them, where do you feel the restriction? If they go, man, I feel it right here. This is on the contractile side. If you feel the tension on the contractile side, usually the joint is hitting a block and it can't go any farther. Whereas if they say, oh, I feel a stretching over here. On the elongating side, if you feel something pulling over here, that's usually a tissue because you're stretching the tissue. If you feel a restriction on the elongating side, that would be tissue. If you feel it on the contractile side, that'd be more joint. Classic example of this, somebody can't squat and dorsiflexion is the problem. If you say, hey, let's try your dorsiflexion and, and you ask them, where do you feel this? If they say, oh, I feel it in the front, well, that's the contractile side. That would probably be a block in the joint. If they say, oh, I feel my Achilles or I feel my calf, that's probably more tissue, the stretching side. So when we're trying to decide if it's tissue or joint, first two signs we're looking for. Does it affect global joints, all three planes? Multiple planes of motion be more towards the joint. Single plane of motion be more towards the tissue. And where do I feel it? Contractile side, more the joint. Elongating side, more the tissue.